community, this is Tommy, and welcome to another musical adventure. Thanks for tuning in. I've picked up quite a few subscribers in the last couple of weeks, uh, and not sure where they're coming from, other than maybe folks who are just stumbling onto the channel. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't done it, go ahead and subscribe. I really appreciate it. I'm marching ever so slowly toward 1,000. Once I hit 1,000, I may do some live streaming and stuff like that. But uh, I want to get to 1,000 before I, I get into any of that. But thanks for watching. Thanks for the regulars that always tune in. I appreciate it. Uh, like, subscribe, share. You know the routine. You hear it on every YouTube video. It almost sounds like a broken record. But the same goes for me. I really do appreciate it. Um, today, in today's adventure, we're going to talk about something uh, that I don't know a whole lot about. I know a little bit about, but enough to share with you guys. Those of you that watch my channel on a regular basis, you know I'm a huge fan of Michael Nesmith. And I want to talk about one aspect of his career that is sort of this, I won't say dark spot, but it's, it's something that's just kind of, it was a very short time but it produced a lot of great work, and we're going to talk about that. Now, Nesmith, by 1972-73, had pretty much, uh, was, was really broke. Uh, he had not sold a whole lot of records. He was recording for RCA. While those records are considered widely and highly influential in country rock, um, just his personal stakes were not that great. Nesmith wasn't a touring musician. Uh, he wasn't selling a lot of records at the time. And so it, it was a really interesting period, but he did team up with Jack Holzman. Now, for those of you who don't know, Jack Holzman was the founder of Elektra Records. Now, you've probably heard of Elektra. Uh, Jack Holzman is also uh, widely regarded as the guy who founded uh, The Doors or discovered The Doors. Uh, the Doors recorded for Elektra, another L.A. Uh, band that was, you know, was on Elektra, uh, Love was one of them. There, there were quite a few uh, interesting artists for Electra. And so, depending on where the story goes and, and whether Nesmith approached Hol uh, Holzman or the other way around, but either way, Nesmith and Holzman teamed up. Now that's where the story gets really interesting. Uh, and they formed a label called Countryside, Countryside Records. And a studio was built in California. From what I understand, Michael Nesmith and his wife Phyllis had moved into the ranch, uh, and, and Nesmith was just going to be the in-house producer, and he put together a house band. Now, the house band I want to talk about for just a second, and then we'll talk about the, the music that was made there. Of course, anything Nesmith was doing around this time uh, was with, and I apologize if there's, there's a glare on this, uh, was with Red Rhodes, Orville J. Red Rhodes, pedal steel guitar player, had been playing, to, playing at the Palomino Club in uh, L.A., and so he and Nesmith formed a great musical bond. This, this particular album is a recent release on 7A. It's called Cosmic Partners. It was recorded at McCabe's. Uh, really interesting stuff, but uh, it's called Cosmic Partners. It's actually credited to Michael Nesmith with Red Roads. But most of Nesmith's country rock stuff can all come back to the work he did with, with Red Roads. Red Roads was just a phenomenal pedal steel guitarist, and, and I really can't say enough about the guy. He, he, he brought Nesmith music to a whole new level, uh, just the way he played, the way he, he, he was so ornamental and just kind of out there. But uh, he, he was just a great player, but, but he was kind of the, the Nesmith and, and Red was sort of the core of this house band. Now some of the other players that played on uh, the Countryside label uh, was, aside from Red Rhodes, uh, there was David Berry on piano. Now, David Berry had played with quite a few people. Uh, James Taylor, before he kind of broke out. I think Janis Joplin, Bob Dylan. Uh, David Berry is still around. That's not Dave Berry, the comedian. This is David Berry, the pianist. Um, he's actually still around. He plays out in California. I think he does a regular gig at the Stockton Inn. Uh, so you can probably go out and see David Berry play. Uh, the drummer was Danny Lane. Not Denny Lane. Danny Lane played drums. Now, Danny Lane was sort of there from the beginning. Uh, I believe he was part of that Palomino group that was around. Uh, funny enough, uh, he went on to, Michael Nesmith divorced Phyllis, and Danny Lane was with Phyllis uh, for a short time after that. Um, Danny unfortunately died in 1997. Not sure where his musical career went after this period, but uh, but he was, he was around from the beginning and end of Countryside. 
Uh, a pedal steel player, uh, J.G.O. Rafferty. Now, for a long time, I thought J.G.O. Rafferty was sort of a pseudonym for O.J. Rhodes, uh, Red Rhodes, but apparently not. J.G.O. Rafferty uh, was, a, was a real player, pedal steel player also. Uh, he played on the Chicago 5 album. I did discover that. He died uh, just recently, uh, January of 2021, uh, Mr. Rafferty passed away, but he was part of the house band. A bass player named Marvin Cave, another Palomino guy. I don't know a whole lot about him. I know he's still alive, um, but um, he was the bassist. Uh, and then finally, uh, well, there's a couple other. Jay Lacey on guitar. Uh, Jay Lacey uh, was just one of those country pickers. Uh, I think he wrote a couple of books. He passed away in 2016, so he's no longer with us, unfortunately. And finally, Dr. R.K. Robert uh, Warford on guitar as well. Now, Warford's one of those interesting uh, players. He, I believe, now someone can correct me, I'm looking at you, uh, Headley, uh, played with the Kentucky Colonels. There's a connection with Warford and, um, and uh, Clarence White. I know that Warford was one of those B. Bender guys, the B. Bender guitars. Of course, Clarence White's one of my all-time favorite players. But uh, Warford is, is, was kind of in that group. Uh, he was a legit picker, and so he was part of that, that group as well. Now, the label officially launched on January 31st, 1973 at the Palomino Club, and it was really interesting. Not long after the label launched, uh, Jack Holzman left Elektra, and it was taken over by David Geffen. And according to all accounts, Geffen had no interest in this little label, which is quite interesting because Geffen was involved with the Eagles as well as Linda Ronstadt, so it seems like this would have been right in his wheelhouse around this time in the, in the early 70s, but uh, I, I believe it just, it just did not happen. Nesmith kind of recoiled and would go on and form his Pacific Arts label and really get away from the whole country thing, but not before some incredible music was recorded, and I want to talk a little bit about that. Now, a couple of other artists, aside from the ones I'm going to talk to, that was rumored to have recorded at Countryside, uh, Spanky McFarlane, and even Peter Tork. Um, now, there's not been any, re these recordings have not surfaced, so I don't know if they're just not very good. Not sure exactly what the full story was, but the Countryside label did release a couple of full-length albums, one of which, and this was sort of the inspiration of this video because I was playing this the other night, a gentleman named Garland Frady. Garland Frady, and this is his album, Pure Country. And I'm going to show this one first because this is the uh, album, as you can see the credits there. Uh, it was um, produced by Michael Nesmith, the Countryside Band. So it was sort of this going to be this homegrown thing. Now, Garland Frady, I've talked about him a little bit before. I think on my Daily Records channel, I highlighted this record. And um, I believe one of his family members reached out. I know he's no longer with us. I hope I can show you the label down there, the Countryside label uh, that's on the back there. Distributed by Electra. So there was a, uh, a form. Uh, uh, of course, the, if you notice also, the designer of the album, Dean Torrance. That's Dean Torrance of Jan and Dean, Kitty Hawk Graphics. This was recorded uh, early 73, so before the uh, label folded. According to Discogs, there were uh, two albums recorded on Countryside, or two albums released on Countryside. There was this, this Garland Frady record. I'm going to show you the inner sleeve as well. And then the back there. And I want to show you the label, because it's such a cool looking label. Garland Frady, Pure Country. Now this album... Um, a pretty good standard uh, country fair, country rock fair. Maybe a little more twangy than the country rock stuff. Definitely not m more in line with kind of old school Merle Haggard than, say, the Eagles. But uh, a lot of cover songs on here. He even does uh, the Michael Nesmith song, Silver Moon. Uh, there's a song, uh, The Brand New Tennessee Waltz. Uh, also included on this is his only single and song that I know of called The Bar Rooms Have Found You. Uh, he even does a version of Teacher Children, the Graham Nash song. But uh, Garland Frady, Pure Country. The other album that was released on the Countryside label was uh, a record by O.J. Red Rhodes, uh, and it's called Velvet Hammer in a Cowboy Band, which is a great title. Unfortunately, I don't have that record. I would love to have a copy of it. Uh, so I'm hinting if anybody wants to send me some VC and you've got an extra copy of that album, 
who's your buddy? Um, but anyway, Red Roads, uh, I do have a copy of the album on my computer, and I've heard it. It's really phenomenal. Like I said, Red's an incredible player. But uh, there were those two full-length albums and a handful of singles that were released on Countryside. The label only lasted about a year. Now, there are some side things to go along with the Countryside label. One is Ian Matthews' album, Valley High. Uh, this album featured the Countryside Band, uh, Danny Lane, um, Jay Lacey, uh, Warford. They're all on here, Red Roads. Uh, so they're, they're here on this album, produced by Nesmith. And a lot of you will know uh, this Ian Matthews album features an arrangement of Seven Bridges Road that pretty much was stolen, borrowed, nicked, however you want to describe it, by uh, the Eagles. But Valley High, it's a really, really nice record uh, produced by Nesmith and uh, worth seeking out if you haven't got it. Another record is one that I've talked about here before, uh, Burt Janch. Um, this is L.A. Turnaround. This album was produced by Nesmith. Uh, it also features Red Roads and some of those uh, players uh, and includes also Klaus Vorman. So there's a Beatles connection there, but... Uh, a lot of those players there. And Nesmith actually got around for, to RCA. He recorded an album uh, called Pretty Much Your Standard Ranch Dash. Now, some would argue this is probably his most country-sounding album uh, of all the Nesmith stuff. Um, but this is uh, featured the, the house band on this record, uh, including, um, like I said, D David Berry. Uh, Nez is on here, Red Roads. Uh, another player that I didn't mention, Billy Graham. Not the Reverend Billy Graham, but Billy Graham is another player that, that, that pops up um, in that group as well. Uh, Jay Lacey, uh, you know, some really heavy-duty players. And this is a fine album. The only complaint I've got with this album is that it's kind of short. Uh, but it's, it's a pretty cool record, and um, it's, to me, an essential country rock album. But uh, the Countryside label, unfortunately, would fold. Uh, after those few releases and handful of stuff, but I don't know anything about the studio, where it was record, where it was built. Uh, I don't know if it's still there, or if the studio was torn down, or if it was just you know kind of went by the wayside. How much of the studio uh, was you know a studio, or was it just a house where they made some records? I don't know. Uh, it's a little bit of a mystery, and so part of the reason for this video is not only to talk about these records. But if some of you may know, uh, because I, I don't, it's kind of just this little hole in Nesmith's career that produced some really fine work, but there's not a whole lot known about it. Uh, any photos of the studio or anything like that. Um, it did exist. It had real players, and it was a legit thing. It just didn't last long. Holzman packed up his tent and left, and, and that kind of left Nesmith holding the bag. Um, again, he would go on, regroup, and, and do some other things, but that's where the label kind of ended uh, with, with Holzman um, and no other support, because like I said, Electra went in a completely different direction after Geffen, Geffen took over. Um, and so that's the short and brief story of Countryside. Hope you enjoyed the video. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you've got any insight to add, that's what I know about it. Some of you may know more, and I probably got some stuff wrong. Call me out on it. I don't mind it. Uh, either way, thanks for coming along, and we'll see you next time. In the meantime, save the Texas prairie chicken.